We'll see. It's a beautiful grey, but kind of done with greys. I have been tormenting Mike. Tormenting? How do you say? We uh, go with a stick and then we fight to make it round and try. No, we try this. Square. We try the square. All right. Yeah. Yeah, but let's see what we have here also. No. I mean, this is not such a strong stick either. It's one of those rotten ones that, like, no, I can not. break this like this. Can you? Do you want me to do it? No. I'm gonna show you the results of those experiments. Here I have them. Hello and welcome. <laughs> welcome to my wild knitting. This is not a regular podcast episode, but it's still a video that is part of this my wild knitting journey. And it's actually a very wild journey, but it's a so inspiring one, at least for me. I'm drinking a little bit of coffee. I'm gonna take a bit more. Tasty. And um, so, Today you will see two exper experiments, two processes of me trying to feel more connected and figure out ways to feel more connected to the fibers I'm using. And some of those ways are spinning your my own yarns and dyeing my own yarns. And when it comes to spinning, I am completely new. I got super inspired. Um, Sue, a subscriber, contacted me or comment one of my latest videos. She said, I think you really would love spinning your own yarn. And I thought maybe, maybe I should, you know, start ease into that spinning world. Um, or processes. So Sue told me that uh, the best way to start learning spinning is to use a, a top whirl or drop spindle and start understanding the mechanism or like the process of spinning. And uh, she also sent me a beautiful video of her uh, showing me just a little bit how to use her the the spindle she has and so we exchanged some emails and it was such an inspiring um, and on I feel I felt really honored and um, thank you so much Sue I hope we'll still exchange things and I'm gonna show you you'll be the first one seeing uh, me starting to spin for sure but in this video what you will see is me dyeing some of my yarn that's also a, another way for me to feel more connected to the fibers i use um, and yeah i think that use natural dyes it's a lot better than use chemical dyes and i want to learn to dye all of my yarns and I had some yarns in my stash that I didn't really feel excited to use because of the colors. And so I decided to dye them with some of the materials I found around me, really like next door. So you will see me dyeing some skeins and making a drop spindle and Mike pretty much helped me all the way through with the spindle because I'm not a talented woodworker, let's say, but I'm an adventurous one. And, um, and so you will see us uh, doing all of these different processes and experiments. And then I'll catch up with you once you finish to see that journey. Uh, I'll show you the end results or what we created basically. So I hope you'll enjoy this one and thank you so much Sue for inspiring me to ease into spinning.
I knitted this sweater um, in February, I think, something like that. I really like the contrast and I, maybe I shouldn't dye this one, I should, I should dye the other one, but it doesn't have an amazing fit on me. And it's beautiful with this nice um, color work, but I'm thinking I would like to color it and have maybe, yeah, transform this light gray color into a beige, brownish beige. Um, it could be interesting and if I fail, I'll uh, still enjoy it. I, yeah, I would really like to dye this, uh, this one and I want to use the walnut shell uh, shells, uh, I don't know how you call the outer part of the walnuts, but yeah, so we're gonna pick up some of the of those that are, we can find in the on the ground. We're gonna maybe find other materials, I don't think. I have actually some but very little amount of onion skins um, or onion peel. Um, it's not so much, I think it's like two onions worth of onion peel, but we're gonna throw that in the pot as well. So I am not actually going to research anything about this. It's a pure experiment. I want to do it for the fun of it and for, you know, the curiosity. I don't want to research and do things always properly. I've heard that woody materials such as, you know, barks and wood in general has already some mordant, mordant uh, to, to make the color stick to the, the fabric. So I'm not gonna add any like salt or anything. I'm just gonna boil the ingredients together and until you know um, the water becomes like a, an interesting color and then let it cool down a bit and then put the this beautiful sweater inside and i don't think like the worst thing i think it could happen to this sweater is that it becomes smaller but that's absolutely um a good thing uh, because it's quite huge for me and uh, yeah so that's what we're gonna do and uh, yeah let's uh, just go and gather some nice natural materials Okay, I got quite a lot of them. This is basically the part that colors, I think, you see. 
and I gather just a little bit of yarrow and mugwort as well. And now I'm gonna put them, put everything in a pot full of water and we're gonna boil everything. out of end as usual when I like to experiment so now I'm dying <laughs> my beautiful Felix cardigan that was grey as well I'm gonna boil it again and dye more things <laughs> because <laughs> I'm on this you know train and now I'm gonna go and uh, yeah, we'll see how it uh, will end up. I think that even if it's like a subtle beige, grayish, beige, brownish color, I'm still really happy. It's a really beautiful earthy color. Uh, even if it's like super subtle, I'm super okay. I think there is nothing that it could go wrong, like at this point, at least. I hope, <laughs> but I'll um, stop recording because also the recording while or filming while I do this is quite stressful because I have to change camera angle. Anyhow, I think I'll uh, show you the end result in a bit when the yarn and the garment uh, are dry and then we'll see the, the result. But what I'm doing is basically leaving them in the water, the colored water, the dyes, and, um, and then I just wash away and like squeeze away the excess uh, water and wash away everything with like cold water. I'm not really explaining myself well, but yeah. Anyhow, I'll uh, catch up with you in, I don't know, we'll catch up soon. <laughs> okay, this is the situation. Um, I don't know how much you can see, but I'm very happy with this one. It became this kind of like light beige 
Um, I can't really see if you can see the true color because it's too bright outside here. But this one is quite the same and this one is barely, yeah, it didn't really change so much the color. But uh, very, very interesting. I'm very excited. It's very interesting. So now they're just standing here, but it's not gray anymore. Okay, so I put the gray yarn, the rustic one, in this um, mesh bag or this in this bag to dye more. Let me zoom. Okay. And now I got an idea. I have this beautiful um, yellowish rustic yarn. So I want to dye this too. And I have four skeins. It has a greenish tone. So I would like it to become a bit warmer. Um, a warmer color. Now I'm unwinding, if that makes sense, this cake because I think it will um, it will be better. It will the color will be more even, I guess, on the on the fiber. We'll see. Spring brings all things new things. Sound sights, fresh lights, and I might just be alright. New me, new you will see. Warm sea, swim free, sing free, be free. Spring brings all things new things Sound sights, fresh lights And I might just be alright New me, new you will see Warm sea Swim free, sing free, be free. Okay, I have been tormenting Mike because I want to make a drop spindle, but I'm not a really good woodworker. Mika is. So, now we're gonna make a drop spindle. I worked for three days to repair the vise of the workbench. And now we're ready to make a spindle. That's amazing. I'm so happy, it was so much work. Is eating a sandwich? Yeah. Let's hope it will hold. It will. Together. We'll make a nice one. No, but the, the vice, I mean. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have... I found also these two in the garden. I hanged my tomatoes in on them. So we have two straight, um, big, pretty straight sticks. And then two squared ones. The thing is, when you put it into the hole of the other piece, the hole has to fit the piece that goes through, like the stick, very well, right? So that it can get glued mm. on the stick. Mm. And either you have unless a really you make an round in, one. Unless you make an indentation, like some sort of indent. Yeah, I mean, there are basically two pieces. One has to go in like that, right? Yeah, it's the wall. Yeah, it's this called. would be a round disc like yeah. that. Yeah. And either you have a super round stick so you can drill a round hole. Yeah. But it's pretty difficult to make something so round unless you have like a tornio, like a yeah. lead. lead or yeah. I'm so 
searching for the pieces of wood to uh, create the whirl part. This is oak, and I was thinking, I like this one. I'll make a circle here. Watch me. Here we are. I hope you liked this process and I'm gonna show you the results of those experiments. Here I have them. So let's talk a little bit about the dyeing experiments uh, with the walnut hulls and uh, then I'll show you the drop spindles uh, we made. So I'm very, very pleased with the, the dyeing process and the color. Let me show you. So the original color of the yarn, which was, by the way, an undyed yarn, was this beautiful, uh, very light gray. And as I said, I loved it, but um, I had many gray garments in my wardrobe and uh, I felt not so inspired by that color. And that's the result. It's like the color of the walnuts, the, the real, the actual walnuts, you know, the, the nuts. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful color and I am so, so excited to knit something with it. And I dyed two skeins, so I think I have enough to knit a nice vest maybe or like a shawl, maybe not a sweater unless I do some color work. Uh, but it's it's a beautiful beautiful color and I'm so so pleased with it and browns are really my colors <laughs> I love all shades of brown I love them so I'm very very happy and yeah it's uh, it really changed this color and it really took this beautiful beautiful light brown so I'm very very pleased I think I'll uh, I'll talk about some of my knitting plans uh, in the next podcast episode, which will come soon. And I'll show you uh, the patterns I want to knit or the pattern I want to knit with this yarn. And I'm very excited. And yesterday um, I got, I received in the mail a beautiful, beautiful package. I'll talk about it um, in my next podcast episode, but a subscriber, Iveta, she sent me beautiful yarns that she was like, I have this in my stash and I don't really use it. If you want, you can have it. And, and it's a very rustic wool, this beautiful 
cream white and it's so cheap it smells so good and uh, she sent me four massive skeins so thank you so much Iveta and I have actually um, also a, another gift she sent me but I'll talk about it in the podcast episode uh, but uh, I'm very happy and I'm showing you this because I think I would like probably to dye this but I don't know because I really like this cream white and uh, it would be really nice to knit with it but I could also knit a garment with these ones as well together like okay, some so sort of color work garment but we'll see and the other skein I dyed um, so the this one was uh, is another skein by uh, Yarn Home and it's this uh, like light greenish yellow I don't know it has a kind of cool undertone it's kind of like a cooler yellow if that makes sense and the color became a more like mustardy deep yellow dark yellow color and I'm very pleased with the result but it's it's a subtle change I prefer this color than this one so I'm really happy but I I dyed just one skein and I had I have three more cakes so I could dye more but we'll see I could also knit a garment with that one as well with this one as well we'll see but I'm also very happy with the, this color how it turned out okay so the dyeing process was a success when it comes to the yarns I dyed but when it comes to the garments, for some reason, the color didn't really change much. Um, this was one of the garments I dyed and it's, it, it changed, the color changed. Um, but it's still kind of like, it has still has a gray tone um, or undertone. Um, but with, it's a bit warmer gray, if that makes sense. It's more like a gray beige color. I like it. I'm thinking to stick this garment and create a cardigan. I think I'll use it more if it was a cardigan because it's quite oversized as a garment and if it was a gar cardigan I would just like, you know, it would be a, like a kind of flowy cardigan if that makes sense. But yeah, the color didn't really change much. I mean, a little. As you can see, this is uh, this was the yarn I knitted this garment with, and um, it's lighter this gray than this one, but um, still didn't change much. And another garment I dyed, let me close it. It was this beautiful. I love this is my favorite cardigan that I have in my wardrobe, and it's the only like real cardigan that I knitted for myself and it's the Felix cardigan. This got a bit felted, <laughs> which I'm not mad about. Um, it's the Felix cardigan with this beautiful eyelid um, raglan increases and it's absolutely beautiful but as you can see the color didn't really change much as well. It got slightly like warmer if that makes sense than the original color so yeah but I'm, I mean I really love it it's it has a really like yeah it has a warmer it's kind of like a warmer gray if that makes sense um, yeah but it didn't really change much I guess it was because I mean I left it in the dye water for um, more than 12 hours I, I would say 17 hours something around that um, amount of time but uh, didn't really change much and I think it was because um, that dyed water I don't know um, yeah but I'm very happy with with it anyway and yeah I'm really happy very very happy with this garment as well but yeah, the color, um, as you can see, I used the same dye and 
it's very different color. So interesting. I love when you do experiments and things are out of your control, like results are out of your control, but you still love the end result. I love that. And when it comes to the drop spindle, ta -da! I am so in love with this drop spindle. I've been looking at drop spindles for like three weeks or two weeks and um, I finally made it. So Mika of course helped me, helped me a lot. Um, I did some finishing, I did the whorl and what I like is that I can with a little bit of force I can remove the whorl and it's still not finished. I need to get a hook and add it to the top here um, and I'll use it as a drop spindle. So I've uh, read that um, top whorl spindles are better for beginners, for people that want to learn to spin, but yesterday I went to a beautiful little town together with Mike. It's about half an hour from here and it's in the mountains. Uh, it's called Rasilia and they had some sort of throughout the little town, uh, the village is more like a village, they had this exposition, um, beautiful, they had this beautiful um, I don't know, it was an exposition, I guess, uh, with a lot of big paintings and photos and pictures um, around the different, on the walls of the different little streets. And the, those pictures were depicting women using spindles and spinning their own yarns. And they all had drop spindles. And I researched a bit and I found out that drop spindles uh, were the preferred or yeah, the tool used to hand spin the wool. And uh, it was such a beautiful uh, tour we had, like we just walked around and seen uh, all of the different, it's kind of like a, seat, a little town that has lots of streams of water running throughout, through the different parts of the town or the village and it was such a beautiful uh, time that we had and uh, yeah I was very inspired by the different pictures of these women, beautiful women um, spinning their own wool. So I'm very happy I have this and I don't have the wool to spin yet. I'm researching a bit so when I'll find it, I'll uh, keep you posted. Uh, this is gonna, this is just the beginning of my spinning or fiber journey, I would say. But I'm very happy. I was thinking to buy one and then I was like, but why is it such a simple, yeah, yeah, it's very simple tool to make, but you need a little precision. This is why I, uh, got help from Mika because it's more precise. Very happy with the results. I, yeah, it, it's, it was such a beautiful, beautiful experience for me. And I love to experiment and I love to envision what I can do with the different tools and the different um, ingredients that I have at hand. And uh, I use walnut hulls because we have, we're surrounded by walnut trees around here. Uh, so there are many on the ground. And so I got those, um, but if I find other ingredients, I'll experiment with them as well. But very happy with both of these. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, bit different than a podcast episode video. And I hope you are having great time. I hope this inspired you to, you know, get creative and find ways to reconnect more with the materials that you use. That I, I think that creating a, a deeper connection with the materials we use in our craft is such a, an important thing to do, but uh, yeah, 
it all depends also what you what gives you joy it shouldn't stress you out so yeah I didn't show you this really spins well um, oh. but it has a nice it spins well it's not really wobbling in the very happy okay so i'll uh, publish a podcast episode soon uh, where i show you all of my finish knits and some working progress projects and some gifts that i receive so stay tuned for that and in the meantime if you want to join our patreon page um we are having nice time there um we show some things that we don't show here sometimes and uh, yeah, I try to publish one video per week there as well. So to give an extra, extra moments of sharing there as well. So thank you so much for being here and see you next time.